past few weeks have been some of the most historic, exciting, and visually stunning in all of Starbase history. We got to witness the first ever full Starship stack. Ship 20 and Booster 4 cheers rang out around us at Starbase. Let's watch ship and booster roll out and what it was like to be on the ground filming and documenting the event. Our friend and astronaut Cyan Proctor stopped into town for a few days. We got to share with her that special moment of seeing Starbase for the very first time. And gorgeous. Mary Liz catches up with her about how training's been going and what it's going to be like to orbit the Earth for three days in a SpaceX Crew Dragon. And so I actually have a model here. So when our nose cone opens, this will be a beautiful window that we will be able to look back on Earth and, and just see it from this perspective. And finally, this episode's moment of zen, the sci-fi future of our dreams, starships and horses. Here we go. We have a lot of footage to watch. Let's begin. Yeah! Welcome to the first episode of The Road to Mars. We are Ryan Shalinsky and Mary Liz Bender of Cosmic Perspective. And in this series, we're going to be trying something uh, a little bit new. Uh, we're going to be sharing more of what it's like to live here in South Texas, to live near Starbase, and what it's like to be on the ground filming and documenting the development of SpaceX's next generation Mars rocket, Starship. to Port Isabel, Texas about six months ago. And to start, we're gonna be revisiting some of those same places that first sparked our move here from Cape Canaveral in December. is South Padre Island, which is home to some of the most beautiful beaches in the country. And at the southernmost tip of the island is Isla Blanca Park. How are you guys? Hi, how are you? places to view a starship launch. You get an incredible view from just across the water and also it's a great place to spend the day. The community comes out. I love to be there because I love talking to everybody about this exciting time we're living in. Yes! <laughs> we made it! Congratulations SpaceX and Elon! So there is one more beach that has a spectacular view of Starship. And to get there, we're gonna take one of our favorite drives of all time. When you come here, nothing can prepare you for that time that you round the final curve and you see Starbase for the very first time.
the scale of what SpaceX is building here at Starbase is immense. I'm reminded of an article by one of my heroes, Ray Bradbury, where he talks about film in the space age. He talks about the challenges that filmmakers have, but also the responsibility that we have to share the size of what we're building in space exploration. So in these episodes, keep an eye out for moments of scale where you begin to feel the size of what is being built here. And let's talk about them in the comments below. All right, booster number four, big day. Now, another way we're working to transport you here with us and to share a sense of scale uh, is by filming in cinematic virtual reality. This is a 3D stereoscopic camera. It's the Zcam K2 Pro, and essentially it's two 4K cameras positioned precisely at the right interocular distance that matches your left and right eye. 
Now we also record audio with ambisonic microphones. So when you view this footage and the audio inside a virtual reality headset, like the Oculus Quest 2, for example, you really get an immersive feel for what it was like to be here during these events. And there's nothing like looking up and getting a feel for how tall Starship and Super Heavy is. Twenty-nine Raptor engines lifting to the orbital pad for the very first time. Jack from NASA Space Flight was with us filming out of our truck, and now I don't know if you guys were watching live, but we felt pretty serious suspense as those twenty-nine Raptors lifted for the very first time. And then here I am going up. Ah, so weird. My friend and astronaut Dr. Cyan Proctor and our friend Christina came to visit me this weekend in Starbase, and I got to show them around. <laughs> and while we were talking on the dunes while staring at the launch pad, it really hit me that this new era of private space travel is actually here. We've been thinking about it for so long, but now that I have a really good friend who was selected to go on a mission on a SpaceX Crew Dragon that will orbit the planet for three days before returning home, I realize this is it. We're here. I'm having a hard time coming to terms with the fact that 
you're about to fly to space. <laughs> and I keep wondering how you must feel. Um, you know, you just saw yourself on the cover of Time magazine. You just saw yourself yesterday on the Netflix trailer. Uh, you've been in the midst of so much training and you're, you're so busy with interviews and everything. Have you had any time to kind of step back and think about what's actually happening and the influence that you're having on the world as you do this? No, <laughs> uh, which is a little bit on the sad part, right? But it literally everything is happening so fast. It's like uh, all of a sudden your life changes and there's this cool thing that happens, but it, it, it comes by and you're, you're trying to enjoy it in the moment, but then it goes by you and the next thing's right there in front of you and it's just as cool. And so you're just trying to keep up with all of the stuff in addition to all of the training um, and getting prepared for this life-changing journey. And, and it's been wonderful, but I'm looking forward to having some time to reflect when I get back from space. Yeah, so I know that there's a lot going on for you before you launch on September 15th. And I know there's a lot going on in orbit too. So even though this is this historic first all civilian mission and all of us like to dream that you'll just have all this time to bask in wonder at the window, that's not the case really. You have a lot of science that you have to do, right? Oh yeah, we have a lot of medical stuff that we're doing because we're being all civilians, you know, we can have um, new baselines for what it means to become a, an astronaut going to space. And we're going up higher than people have been in a long time. We're gonna be up higher than the International Space Station, but as high as Hubble is. So you're talking about 585 to 595 kilometers up. And so the radiation profile is very different than the International Space Station. So, you know, scientists want to come in and take a look at what's going on. And so when you think about the twin study um, between where uh, with Mark Kelly and um, Scott Kelly, and that was a year long, you know, experiment. But for us, it is that we're going to be up there for three days. But the same scientists that did that study want to see what happens with us. I know that you have an intention to open up that unique, never before flown cupola window and stare outside and work on your art. So can you tell us a little bit about that? And then as you do so, maybe mention like, I don't think people realize that window is not gonna be open constantly. What, what is that schedule like, do you know? So for the first time ever, we're flying the largest window into space. It's a, a cupola on the, basically the nose of our SpaceX Dragon. And so I actually have a model here. So when our nose cone opens, this mm. will be a beautiful window that we will be able to look back on Earth and, and just see it from this perspective. And, and it's going to be, you know, this moment of awe and wonder and and emotions for me as a geoscientist, as a poet, as an artist, all of these things, having that, that thoughtfulness to think about um, the overview effect and, and what this looks like from that vantage point. And, and, but the thing about it, because this is, you know, um, it's a new thing on the dragon, what's interesting is that we have a hatch here that separates this. So when nose cone opens, we won't be able to just pop right up into it right away. There's a hatch here that separates mm -hmm. our cupola from our pressurized, other part of our pressurized section where we live and work. And, and so once we open that up, we can go up and enjoy it and do all of that. But there are times when we're gonna wanna close it back. So it's not that we have um, complete 24 access to it. So we've got to be thoughtful about our time and our use of, of this because it is special. It is really unique. And for me, it's what I'm looking forward to the most in space. We're talking about this new era of private space travel. And you got a glimpse into another section of that era just last weekend when you came here to Starbase. And I just want to know, I mean, first of all, that was an amazing weekend, but what is your first impression of Starbase and what's going on here with Starship? And how wonderful it is. It reminds me of like, I, cause I grew up watching Star Trek and just that whole idea of, 
um, when they did the reboot of um, of Star Trek. Yeah. And they, you know, they were in Iowa, I think, and he was going to the um, the base, the, the the launch base, and this is kind of feels like that. Oh my goodness! You know, I was blown away. Um, Starbase, like. Who doesn't want to go there? <laughs> um, but just to have the opportunity to see a couple of starships, you know, just right there by the side of the road. And gorgeous. It's, it's unbelievable. Sun flare. How pretty it is, mm -hmm. you're right. You just... Ooh, something smells good. I'm trying to get an idea of like just the, of what it would be like to live in there, you know? and uh, be not only just lifting off, but then being, you know, living in, floating around and the layers and just what the interior is going to be like. And then to see Starship 20 being transported down the road to the launch pad, it was just magical because I, I sat there and I thought, wow, this is the beginning of us becoming, um, you know, a multi-planetary species. Like this is ground zero for that. Uh, and, and to see that history and to be aware of, of this and, and to say, I'm here and, and I, I'm watching this happen now. It makes me think about when, you know, Kennedy say we will go to the moon and all that stuff. And then they're saying, well, uh, making Kennedy Space Center and laying the concrete and the ground. And then the first time they launched from there and, and the fact that that's what's happening now in, in this part of Texas, um, right on the border of Mexico, it just is so magical. And I, I'm really thankful that I was able to come down there and experience this with you and our other good friend, Christina, because that just adds another layer. And when you said, do you want to go horseback riding? And I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> who doesn't want to go horseback riding next to, you know, a starship? <laughs> well, and what's interesting is that like, when you go to Cape Canaveral, Cape Canaveral, the beach there is closed off. So you can't uh -huh. get to the same level of intimacy that you can with starship. Um, you know, one day that might change where you had access, I don't know. But right now you can be on the beach surfing and there's a rocket on the pad right behind you. You know, right, literally one, you can see it just two, over the sand dunes. Three. Oh, this is a good one. All right, well, thank you so much for telling us all about this, for spending time with me again. I really, really appreciate you. And I cannot wait to see you launch on hopefully if there's no delay, September 15th. 15th. Yes, Let's we're all going to watch along. And then that I, when you come back, I can't wait to hang out. And oh, I'm so excited for you. And good luck. And thank you. And I just want to say I appreciate you and, and our friendship. And those of you that are following, um, you can go to inspiration4.com and you can uh, support us and our $200 million, fund, $200 million fundraiser for St. Jude uh, through buying merchandise, um, by tuning in to the launch, uh, all of those kinds of things. And then if you are into art and stuff, you can check out my Patreon or my Shift for Shop which is called myspacetoinspire.com. All one word, myspace with the number two. Ooh, wrong <laughs> way, space two. <laughs> I'm like, wait, rotate, <laughs> inspire. Uh, and so lots of ways to not only support me, but particularly to support our mission of, you know, ending childhood cancer. We can do this. Exciting day, we might see the first ever fully stacked starship. So it was a really special moment, that moment of stacking when the, the lifts came down and we could hear the cheering from the SpaceX employees and the teams in front of us at Starbase. And we could hear the cheering of the crowds of people that had gathered at the road and some of the photographers that were 
scattered in the dunes behind me. All the people that came out from Hawthorne and different SpaceX teams to Boca Chica, maybe a lot of them for the first time, to, to, to get this work done and, and to be all together and to see this for the first time. It still affects me today as such a beautiful example of what we can achieve when we come together. I've had watermelon full of course before. <laughs> Just watch your fingers. Yeah, <laughs> get excited. All right, you and then I just put it out like this. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Hungry. Oh, this greatly changes their personality. <laughs> oh, you love that, mm -hmm. huh? Look at that. Oh, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, like that, funny. don't you? Oh, look at that. Thank you for watching episode one of The Road to Mars. We hope you'll subscribe for future episodes. We owe a huge thanks to our patrons who make all of this possible. If you want to support the work we do, please consider becoming a member on Patreon. There you'll get access to our exclusive Discord server. I love our awesome Discord crew. You'll also get access to our virtual reality videos. We're just about ready to release episode seven of Starbase in VR. Got some exciting stuff coming up for you. That's patreon.com forward slash cosmic perspective. 